Hello to everyone. This is the lens I've been using for almost a decade. I can highly recommend it to you. It does not necessarily have to be from Canon. Have a look at the Sony 24mm 1.4G Master if you're not a Canon friend. I start with the body and then we talk about the strengths of this lens. By the way, the first version of this lens was released in 1997 and was replaced by the Mark II version in 2008, which I am holding in my hands right now. The build quality speaks for itself. I mean, I have this piece for almost 10 years now and it works just like on day one. You still have to spend 1400 US dollars. The link is listed in the video description below. To avoid any questions about this topic, I answered right at the beginning. This lens can be used on all full frame cameras like the 5D Mark IV, on APS-C sensor cameras like the EOS 550D or SL2, or with an adapter on a mirrorless camera like the Canon EOS R5. This means that it can be used on virtually all Canon cameras of the last 25 years. Keep the crop factor in mind on APS-C sensor cameras. With this crop factor you get a 38mm lens and lose the wide angle. So think carefully if it is worth when you take pictures on APS-C sensor cameras. On the upper side is a display for the distances. On the side we have a switch to change from manual focus to out of focus. This lens does not feature an image stabilizer. Doesn't make sense with a 1.2 aperture anyways. For filming I can recommend an ND filter with a 77mm thread. I'm filming almost every day using this lens and in daylight I make use of an ND filter. Since I have this lens with me while I'm traveling I am very happy about the dust and splash protection. The lens hood and the small bag are also included when you purchase it. Oh! I almost forgot to mention it weighs 650 grams. There's also a cheaper version with a 2.8 aperture which presses on your biceps with 280 grams and there's also a version just made for APS-C sensor cameras and it's a pancake lens. Compared to the previous version the chromatic aberrations have been significantly suppressed. Maybe it's because of the new UD glass. If you see any of them, it probably will be on metallic surfaces, especially at open apertures. I recommend the automatic correction or Adobe Lightroom. The whole thing gets a lot better with one mouse click. It looks completely different with dark edges. With open apertures you have a kind of a tunnel vision due to the vignetting. If you use the automatic correction on your camera, you can prevent this from happening. Not completely, but it gets better though. The dark edges will move much further into the corners and at f4 they will have been almost completely disappeared. I packed you all these sample images from f1.4 to f10 into the video description below also in RAW. So you can convince yourself with the performance at home. If you hold this lens directly into the sun or any other light source you will see lens flaring. I still think that the performance is very good but convince yourself with the following examples. Now that we have looked at the weaknesses of this lens, we finally get to the strengths. I've been using this lens for a decade now. In that time, no other lens has made it. Because I consider this lens or the focal length with this aperture to be indispensable. Why? I used this lens on my Canon EOS 5D Mark III, at the time also on my 5D Mark II for club and event photography. It's a great lens for this kind of photography since you get everything in frame and the 1.2 aperture allows you to use less ISO. I prefer to shoot with a DSLR in a club for example rather than using my Canon EOS R 
Because the EOS R doesn't emit a focus light at my flash and the 5D Mark III is completely sufficient for club and event photography. Whereas the EOS R or now the EOS R5 is used for my YouTube videos. With the EOS R5 I have the choice to use the crop factor or not. With this aperture you get a very soft background and you have an always on camera lens. Attention! The combination with the EOS R and the Ronin SC with this lens attached is not recommended. The whole thing becomes clearly too front heavy. It works with the Sony 24mm 1.4 G Master perfectly. So this lens is great to use for event photography, filming and of course weddings. It does a fantastic job in churches, so you don't have to push the ISO too far and give you a nice blur background. When focusing manually the focus ring should run a little softer, otherwise a great lens for filmmakers and all sorts of movies. Some additional locations would be press, time lapse, maybe from a starry sky, through the 1.4 aperture or for the next city trip. By the way, the focus is not that quiet if that plays a role for your work. So have fun with the following shots. The big disadvantage of the Canon EOS R is the crop factor of 1.78. For me as a filmmaker, this is one of the reasons why the EOS R has grown. By the way, there is no crop factor for time-lapse movies with the Canon EOS R. I mean, you have a wide-angle lens and then a crop factor for 4K shots. Super! When you're a photographer, the whole thing doesn't matter again. Here are two examples, one in 4K with crop factor and one in full HD without a crop factor. On this beautiful day, Julia stood once again in front of my camera, thanks again. The tracking could have been better, but as soon as Julia gave me her cold shoulder, the camera lost the face tracking. Only when she came a bit closer, the face tracking came back again. I will show you now why it's my favorite lens for 10 years now. By the way, if you're using this lens, tell me and the others for what are you using it. Below this video, there's a lot of space for your comments. It's a great lens for architecture, although I often use an 18mm lens on my Sony a7 III to get more onto my camera sensor. Ideal for filming in the dark and for details because of the low close-up limit of only 25 centimeters, which is equivalent to 9.8 inches. Another reason that speaks for this lens is the blur background, so called bokeh. At 1.4 you can make the most out of it. 
Ideal to isolate the foreground from the background or for interviews. Maybe that plays a role in your life if you're using this lens for details. At low light, this lens reveals its full strength. You don't have to push the ISO as much as with the 2.8 version, but for a lower price. Maybe that's the right lens for you if you want to film at events or weddings. Yes, you have to spend 1400 US dollars before you start, but you will get a 1.4 aperture, but maybe not the sharpness you would expect. At f8, everything is in focus from the center to the corners, that's for sure. But seriously, who are your customers? Do they look at the photos on a smartphone or tablet? Then the whole thing doesn't really matter, even with printouts. With a 1.4 aperture, only your focus point is sharp and it shouldn't necessarily be in the corners. The further you stop down, the sharper the image gets. I can't complain because this lens has served me faithfully for 10 years and you don't complain either, because with this lens, I have shot well over 300 reviews for my YouTube channel. Finally, let's have a look at what portraits could look like with such a lens. On one hand, you have the possibility to capture a lot of background, and on the other hand, you have the possibility to blur it out completely if you shot directly into the face. In a club, the 24mm has become more popular instead of the 35mm because I can get one to two people more into my frame. So everyone, maybe not the lens that is up to date anymore, that's why a new edition will follow soon, even if it will adapt it to the Canon EOS R system and therefore can't be used on DSLRs anymore. The weaknesses are well known and the strengths are obvious. Wide angle, fast aperture, for a nice bokeh, a fast out of focus, which makes some noise, but a compact format even if it's not quite as compact as with the Canon EOS R, since you make use of the adapter before using it. Keep in mind the Sony version if you have two camera systems. The link is listed in the video description. Feel free to post questions and suggestions under this video. If you follow me on Telegram, you will always be up to date with all the upcoming reviews and you will benefit with some example files. I say all the best from Frankfurt, keep your ears up, until next time, tschüss.